Welcome back to the show, everybody. We got a great one for you this morning. We're going to discuss where XRP price is and what some of the price targets are. Have they changed? Are they the same? What are we to think of this recent pullback, sell-off, or correction? However, you see the market. Mark Yusko talks about Dogecoin being a Ponzi scheme. We're going to check that out. Goldman Sachs, Christine Lagarde from the ESB, Russian Ruble, the UK, and Central Bank Digital Currencies. You're going to need to know about it. Ripple is now getting support from a couple high-profile media outlets over the SEC Ripple case and the recent uh, debacle that has happened from SEC itself. We will discuss. Let's roll this beautiful intro and get inside. Here we go. This is Digital Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Subscribe for new content notifications. Now, here's Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to the show, everybody. You can follow me on Twitter at BackupBradley above at the top of the screen and everything that we're talking about here today. Back over $2 trillion at $2 trillion billion for the cryptocurrency market cap. And that makes me feel a bit better about where we are this morning. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of these numbers here. And we're back up 4.26% on the total cryptocurrency market cap as well. So Bitcoin coming in now at $56,399.81. It's up 3.3% on a 24-hour and still off by just shy of 7% on the seven-day. Ethereum looking at $2,211.87, up 5.25% on the 24-hour and down, or actually up almost 2% on the seven-day. And looking at XRP at the number four spot, courtesy of the dereliction of duty and intimidation tactics by the SEC, we're sitting at $1.37 this morning. We're up 8.75% on the 24-hour, but yet still off 2.8% on the seven-day. And the reason I did the 24-hour and seven-day this morning morning is so you could see that most of these gains are starting to be recovered in the last 24 hours. I think that's important to note. Okay, now let's go ahead and get into this where Dogecoin coming in at the number five spot, they're saying. Holy moly, oh moly. You know, we're going to talk about that in a second. We're going to hear from Mark Yusko, who's going to tell you he thinks it's a Ponzi scheme, but that's kind of funny because Mark Yusko is into Bitcoin, which is a higher price Ponzi scheme. <laughs> I don't know. I'll let you sort it out. Anyway, dollar thirty seven is where we are, one point three seven three nine this morning, and we are ranging currently between one dollar and eighteen cents and one dollar and fifty two cents. We hit this overnight, and you can see obviously we went down and hit one eighteen and busted through that one dollar thirty three cent support line, which we saw uh it actually broke that a couple times, if I believe, yesterday or over the weekend into this morning's early hours. But now it did hit 152 not too far ago, and then it's pulled back now. We're now at 137. So we will take a look just shortly where Dark Defender sees all of this information and what it means for the price targets and the price calls that were called earlier last week and the week, and actually weeks and weeks before this. Are we still on target? Are we not? Well, let's run some news. And before we get out of here, we're going to take a look at that. But there is some news happening we need to stay on top of. This is Mark Yusko here. And he talks about uh, Bitcoin and he talks about Ethereum. And he says that's one of his top picks, Ethereum here. But let's listen to what he says about Bitcoin. Listen to this. Slightly positive commentary from China and other big regulators has got to be perceived as positive, does it not? Sure, especially when that when that uh, commenter is uh, related to the central bank of China. Look, I, I believe that that uh, Bitcoin will be a central bank reserve asset uh, at some point, whether it be China, whether it be Europe, whether it be U.S. Don't don't really know uh, who will go first. But but I absolutely believe this is a huge positive sign. You know, look, Bitcoin is is I think everything that's right with markets. This is a, a long-term monetary system. It is designed as an alternative store of value to fiat currencies, which are being destroyed all around the world. You know, just think about the dollar, right? We've created 40% of all the dollars that ever existed in the last 12 months. And when you do that, you devalue them. And it's because we have too much debt at government levels all around the world. So when you see central yeah. bank governors start to talk 
about an asset that they think could preserve wealth. We've seen that with corporations, with people like Michael Saylor. And uh, it's why, you know, so I have my hashtag, you know, hashtag probably a fad with a little wink. This is not a fad. This is not a Ponzi. Uh, this is something that's going to be yeah. with us for a very long time. And it is a great store of value, basically digital gold. Well, when we're literally printing, we're throwing around trillions of dollars like they, money is just a... Okay, we get the gist of it right there. Obviously, Mark Yusko, a big Bitcoin guy. And let me just clear this up here um, for, for where my stance is here. And I just want to be clear that, you know, I, I do think Bitcoin can make it long term. There's no question about it. However, I do believe that, you know, it is the equivalent of the first cell phone. The first cell phone showed us all what is possible. And thank God for the first cell phone, because if we didn't have that, we probably wouldn't have any cell phones, right? So I'm really grateful for the fact that Bitcoin has come on the scene. It is the first generation tech that showed us all what is possible. And now with more than $2 trillion market cap and a trillion plus of that sitting at Bitcoin's doorstep, it certainly can't be ignored. However, I do feel like because of the amount of energy that Bitcoin uses because of proof of work, there is a problem there. And then with the obvious facts that, you know, there could be a 51% attack with China because the majority of the miners are there that that is another huge issue. And I believe it will take some form of regulation internationally to help really bring it where it needs to be to really uh, harness what Bitcoin is right now and how it could be shaped to be regulated in a way to help it become a more solid, legitimate asset. Obviously, people see value in it, and that's wonderful. But at the same time, you know, I have to say to myself, he says central banks, he believes, will use that. And God bless him. But I don't know if that's true because, you know, here we see, you know, more support to what he is actually saying from like Goldman Sachs. Following years of bashing Bitcoin, Goldman Sachs has added Bitcoin to its market cap performance list of assets. However, listen to Christine Lagarde when she was at the IMF. And I couldn't find the video clip this morning, but as recently as just a few weeks ago, Christine Lagarde said pretty much this exact same thing from her current chair, which is president of the European Central Bank, which is really, you know, representing 17 to 19 nations in, in Europe. So listen to what she says here inside of one minute. One of the main topics up there was cryptocurrencies and all sorts of companies now getting into this effort, not least among them Facebook. What kind of threat does this pose to the traditional banking system? Well, I think it's, you have incumbents, the banks, commercial banks, and you have the disruptors. And clearly the disruptors are having an impact on the incumbents. We just heard a very large uh, systemic bank here saying that they're launching their digital coin, uh, currently piloted in a way uh, within the institutional clients, but to be scaled beyond that. Side note, just really quickly, that's in 2019, and she was talking about piloting from a very big bank back in 2019, for which we were not aware, outside of that statement at the time. Listen to this. We heard from the European Central Bank that they, are, uh, they have launched in November something that is called TIPS, that enables all the banks in the Eurozone to actually transfer instantly at virtually no cost uh, money between them. So I think that the role of the disruptors and anything that is using distributed ledger technology, whether you call it crypto assets, currencies or whatever, and it's far from the bitcoins that we used to talk about a year ago, mm. that is clearly shaking the system. And there you have it. And she tells you it is far from the Bitcoin that we were talking about in 2018, she says. And again, she echoed that comment just a few weeks ago from the ECB chair. So, you know, they're well aware of Bitcoin. And obviously, Goldman Sachs, an investment bank, very big, by the way, but not a central bank. So you see a little bit of this, what feels like conflicting news. You still see people bringing it into their investment funds, offering it to their clients. But yet central banks are saying it will not be Bitcoin. So this is just worth noting is what we want to do here. And again, we're going to look at some of these price target calls here in a second, but let's look at the on and off ramps and the approach going on around the world for central bank digital currencies. Because again, the central 
banks are not going to give up their relevancy. They're not going to give up their control and power that they've worked so hard to have a hold of. And they're not just going to all of a sudden allow somebody to say, hey, you know, let's let something like Bitcoin run neck and neck with us. And if we get beat, oh, well, we just get beat. I don't believe that's how the story goes. So here we have from the People's Bank of China, they soften their tone toward Bitcoin. Uh, stable coins, calling them alternative investments. I think the thing to note here is one of the many things that I have brought up many times about XRP and other tokens like Bitcoin is the fact that the deputy government said Bitcoin and stable coins were investment options and not, not currency. Okay, now that's the big point here. And I feel that that's one of the big things to come out of the SEC Ripple trial or some sort of legal decision uh, to come from that, I hope, is that they get a currency status, but like a convertible virtual currency status where they do not, in fact, challenge the legal tender status of government fiat money around the world. I think that's the best way to find a solution is one that works with the money as XRP does and not challenge the money of the world. So there you go, working with all the money, right, and not challenging all the money as Bitcoin is doing. And I believe that's what gets it largely put in the crosshairs there. Digital ruble front and center in the plans of Russia's central bank. They're getting ready to start talking about what they need to do in the nation for three years to come. And then we see here the United Kingdom is the latest country to begin exploring the possibility of creating a central bank digital currency. They have formed their own task force from the Treasury Department, and that is getting exciting because we know the more we hear about what's going to happen. And listen, we've been following this market for years. A lot of these tests and pilots, this you know, when they announce them to us, doesn't mean it's the first time it's actually happening. And that's something I think is very key to note here. Now, let's change gears and talk about the Ripple court case with the SEC here. And we covered this over the weekend. Ripple had found out that the SEC was seeking information on Ripple from at least 67 third parties around the world. Now, that number has expanded since the weekend uh, from like 10 or 11 to 67 third parties around the world, including the Memorandum of Understanding request uh, to regulators in the United Kingdom, Japan, and Singapore. This has had significant chilling effect on Ripple. And yeah, I guess so. And and its customers. And uh, it is absolutely an intimidation tactic. This is the actual uh, letter that was filed here to Judge Netburn to let, her, their, let them know what is going on and what the SEC has done. And I cannot wait to see the fallout there from uh, that court case to see what happens to the SEC because it does feel like they're at least operating unethical, if not illegally, or certainly out of the protocol of operations to pursue such measures from foreign market regulators and their business partners. We'll keep an eye on it. Now, we are starting to see a little changing of the tide in the media. Wall Street Journal is the latest high-profile media outlet that has jumped to Ripple's defense, and they're not the only one because they also saw Blue, uh, uh, Forbes actually do it too. It says, while Ripple pins its hopes on new crypto-savvy SEC Chairman Gary Gensler to bring more clarity to the table, the board claims that his statements mirror the agency's current stance. And that is something I have been mentioning a lot on this channel. Gary Gensler says a lot, and you can find video all over the place where he says the fact that digital assets or crypto assets or what have you have a little bit of utility, and I'm paraphrasing, but it's something along those lines. He says it really doesn't mean that much to him that they have utility to them. And he sees broadly the market. He's expressed very openly and casually that the majority of the market in his eyes are digital asset security. So as excited as I am to see some new leadership come in, I am kind of I am kind of bracing myself for what that leadership will actually be, right? So we'll keep an eye on that as well. Now, here we go to Dark Defender who put out this and let's just look at the original post that he put out here. And he says my dear's XRP has successfully defended the 133 um uh 
133 and make this a great support let's have a look at the smaller time frames four hour chart here he's looking at the road to a dollar 83 272 580 920 and 13 dollars let's go ahead and take a look at this chart now and basically what he's saying is that you know even though we had that break and it went below you know every time it went below and challenged it to 112 or 119 it ended up coming back up and finding support over that and again right now we are looking at 135 right so we are above that spot right now and if we can continue to hold that he's saying xrp will try to break out this resistance and if it does do that right because there's been the battle zone of the 133 and you can see where it's dipped down below at times right so looking here he says xrp can retrace back to 133 and a dollar 25 supports as long as she keeps this support above targets are getting closer so if it keeps the support that we're finding at 130 he believes that we could still be on target for the dollar 83 272 five dollars 80 cents and the 920 and the 13 dollars we have nothing left to do but to sit here and watch all of this unfold you know unless of course you jump out of the market but that's everybody Everybody's got to make up their own decision. None of what we're talking about is financial advice, but I do thank all the technical analysts out here that provide information because, you know, I don't follow the charts myself very closely. I do have some simple basic basic technical skills but none that i would place bets on myself but i do appreciate the dark defenders of the world and the crypto wizards and the crypto bull 2020 and everyone else out here that provides information to give us these points that they're not guarantees right but they allow us to say hey will we hit these targets and if we don't let's go back to the charts and the experts and see what they're seeing what has changed and why and does it change targets going forward i think it's pretty interesting to note that all we've been through with the price action going up and then pulling back and retracing the way it has you know it's interesting to me that you know we're still seeing these targets are still on they're still on target here they're, they they haven't changed so next stop we're looking for is 183 272 580 and above this is pretty exciting to me so that's going to do it for me before i get out of here i do want to let you know starting tomorrow ladies and gentlemen starting tomorrow we're going to have unstoppable domains doing a uh a major uh release of premium domain sales and they're coming back on the weekly and that starts tomorrow you will have access to things like trader.crypto rich.crypto and cash.crypto that is going to be exciting so make sure you check that out as well and i will catch all of you on the next one